again. This is Trolls from 8DO and 8DM and 8Dawn and Rowdy Rather 8s. And in this video, I'll be going through our advanced articulations. Um, you may have noticed that we have a couple of other videos that are covering the general way of utilizing the UI. We have a variety of unique features in the interface here that it's important to know. And we also have a video covering the core articulations in the choir. And in this video, I'll be covering all the advanced articulations. And with advanced, I mean predominantly our new articulation system called Multivals. The multivals are really important. It's probably one of the most important like breakthroughs I've had in terms of understanding choir. First of all, the first notion was that nobody understands what a choir is singing. And that's actually as funny and weird as that may sound. It's an important discovery because we didn't have to focus so much on, oh my God, it has to recite Shakespeare. We had to focus on what sounded really great and real and like a choir in a sort of classical big sense. And obviously the choir here is designed for epic music. But let me, um, let me kick it off here by sort of showing you where we are with conventional choir technologies today, which is typically staccato for fast type of notes. And then I'm gonna show you how the staccatos compare to the multivowels in a variety of different ways. And one thing that's interesting about the multivowels here is actually a lot of them rhyme together. I wrote them in a way that they had a Latin aspect to them, but also that you can rhyme. So you'll see there's like C, T, and there'll be La, and Sa, and there'll be Su, and Nu, and so forth. So um, there's actually three, four variations of each of them. There's a bunch more than you can see here. Um, but they can rhyme, and that way you can almost make it like traditional song, songwriting with and all that. But I'll go into that in great lengths. Let's kick it off here by just playing some basic staccato. Um, let me try to, um, let's build the same. We have Enna Su here, so let's try to do that. Let's see here. Enna and Su. So Enna Su. I'll try to play that with staccato at a sort of basic tempo, and then I'm gonna show you what it sounds like with the multivowels. One of the unique aspects about the multivowels is that we recorded them in different tempos and in different dynamics. And I'll go into that in greater lengths, but right now we're gonna play, and this key switch down here symbolizes the normal tempo of multivowels. So first staccato and then the multivowels. That's pretty good. It doesn't sound, it sounds a little bit quantized computer-ish, Siri-like, but it's, I think it's pretty decent actually. Let's try to compare it to the multivals. So as you can probably hear, a little more precision in the multivals, everything is a little more tight and it's not like as sort of broken up as you would typically get with staccato, but I would say like staccato actually works pretty decent for a standard 120, 140 kind of da, da, da. But uh, once we speed it up, um, it gets into a completely different realm. Let me just play you a snippet here from one of my demos using the multivals, and then I'll try to do a comparison where we speed up the staccatos to twice the speed we just did, and then we'll compare them against the multivals, and you're gonna see the distinct difference. Now, to have a choir sing that fast and fluently, one thing is even if we tighten up the staccato notes here, there's a transitional element, a legato, if you will, even at a single tonal level between the different words, the way they morph and connect and all that. So let me try to play something a little similar to what we did before with the staccatos here, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the multiviles. And now you're gonna see uh, what the true difference is. We're gonna go double tempo of where we were before, and this is where the traditional choir technology with staccatos and all that really starts collapsing, in my opinion. You lose the clarity, and it sounds very computerized. And obviously, it helps once you have it in the mix and you can blur it out, but there is a notable distinction you, I think you'll, you'll see. Let me try to do the same thing again. Let's uh, beef up the tempo 50% more and then let's see what it sounds like. Now it's also a funny comparison because we're only singing one word. Obviously once we get deeper into everything, we're gonna start using the word builder and the phrase builder here and you can get much more elaborate stuff. But I just wanted to exemplify the point here of tempo and how much it impacts typical staccato and how it impacts the multivals. And the faster you go, the faster you want your choir to sing, 
the more the staccato simply breaks apart because you don't get the fluent transition in the notes. And sometimes a word like sto will be longer than ah, so you get a sort of limping choir. Um, here it's much more fluent because it was sung that way. Um, and down here, if you notice these key switches here, this is normal tempo and this is double tempo. And again, they're recorded in different sessions and different tempos. So uh, you really get a lot of content. Uh, hopefully we really cover the spectrum of sort of that epic fast singing style that, that sort of just gets a little tricky with the existing choir technologies. Let's start to move on here. Let me try to play uh, another demo here of mine. It's using multivals in a variety of different ways and pay particular attention to the dynamic aspects. You're gonna hear the choir almost whisper at times and then you're gonna hear them sort of bloom out and sing more dynamically. And one of the beautiful things about uh, the multivals is that you have that dynamic variation and you can really scale from really beautiful loud singing down to like more whispery and it's something we we haven't been able to do with choirs before and again if you imagine we had to record different tempos every key and we also had to record again in terms of dynamic range and all that so it's a it's a lot of samples but yeah uh, check this out So let's try to build what we just heard, both with staccato and with multivals, so you can get a feeling for how different they sound. Um, right now, um, I have a variety of different articulations down here, a variety of different words that I've typed in. Um, you actually have four modules if you really want to make elaborate sequences, but we're going to keep it tight here to 16. And I'll try to play something similar to what you heard in the demo with the staccatos here, and then we'll switch to the multivals so you can get a feeling for, again, for the difference between the two. Again, it sounds decent and we're used to that sound and it's very one of the great things about choirs that things are forgiving in the mix. So even though it does sound a little artificial here and a little overlapping in many ways, um, you can get away with it in a mix where it sounds decent, but try to check it out in comparison to the multivals. you simply just get that clarity, that human element, like, okay, it sounds like humans actually saying this and it wasn't like pre-programmed Siri-like. Uh, let me try to play um, another part of the demo as well, and this time hitting some of the higher notes so you can listen a little to the altos and sopranos too. Let me also try to demonstrate how to um, utilize both multivals and staccatos and also how to utilize it for the purpose of what I would call like songwriting or choral writing, but in the sense that the choir rhyme, the words rhyme on each other and you get that ma more natural feel in it. Um, let's do here, let's try um, into sa ex meta, um, let's see, ta su fe mi sa le. So that would be somewhat rhyming. And then let's take some staccatos here. Let's do a uh, ra, sto, um, let's see what we do, moose, um, su. And I'll use this in the beginning um, because obviously the vowel is based on da, da, da. Um, but right now I'll just show you how you can mingle the two. So let's say you want four bars or you want the choir to hit on four bars. You essentially just add a staccato in the beginning or the end of the multivowel. And that way you can have them sing four or six or seven, whatever you want. And it's also show how well they work together. So a little bit of mixture between multivowels and staccato and also the more sing-songy part. And after that, I'm gonna do the same exercise again, but we'll go twice as fast. <laughs> Let me just play that one more time and just so you can see how the staccatos are hitting in the beginning here as well. Let's get them rolling. It's almost ironic, it's like you know, with the staccato though, it's like, this is what they're really great for. They're great for articulating certain aspects of the choir. They're actually not that great for singing fluent sentences and all that, so it's a little, ironic that we are attempting and so focused on building word builders and phrase builders and obviously you can you can do pretty a lot of things here like um we could type um let's try to do uh we could do like a d o but i think the notion of these word builders is that they work to some degree and 
<laughs> you can do some things, but it's always going to sound like a Siri or it's always going to get that weird can't sound because things are just disconnected. So until a genius figures out how to morph vowels and all the transitional sounds, and we're talking vastly beyond like traditional legato because we're in morphing different words with each other, not just a singular sound. Um, I think the better way to go is to have a very elaborate sequence here of staccatos, both in dynamics um, and a variety of variations here, connect them with the multivials and the easy to use phrase builders and that way combine them. But this notion of being able to type and have it recite Shakespeare and all those things, I don't think it works. And I don't think there's any proof online that it really works either. So this is really my take on it. Um, I think we've made headways in terms of being able to sing fast, which for me has been the most frustrating part. And also another aspect in terms of the design and um, having more, more basses than tenors and more tenors than altos and more altos than sopranos. If you imagine sort of a pyramid-like structure, you really get a beautiful bass section. And traditionally epic music today is always in the high range. You hear the soprano scream and you hear like a little whimsical bass section, but we had a 70 piece bass section. It's the first time like, oh my God, like we can actually get basses to sing epic and really sit down there beautifully in the mix. And you don't even need sopranos. The basses are so fat together with the tenors, they, they sit well, so that's cool. try to um, play um, another thing here. Let's go twice as fast on the multivals uh, and blend them here with the staccatos again. I'm not even going to attempt to do that with uh, staccato notes. Obviously, that was a mixture of uh, staccato and uh, multivals. Let me just try a cardiac exercise here. I'm going to randomize these guys here. We'll see what happens. And then I'm going to go up and randomize the multivals as well. And we'll play the same sequence again. And let's see how flexible this thing actually is. Okay, it's not too shabby, but I would always say when it comes to working with the staccatos and the multivals here, there are certain words, certain phrases that are a little longer, like these guys here, the multivals are pretty good on the grid in terms of quantization. I would be more cautious with the staccato. There are certain words like sto that are longer than a ah and za and those things. They, they're just certain words. So I actually prefer to play them in hand. And a really important trick, and this is something I'm covering in the UI video as well, and I really encourage you to watch because there's a lot of unique features in the library and that can be easily overlooked. And one of them is up here. This little triangle here allows you to select whether you want to control these guys on velocity, which I don't normally recommend because all these guys are going to be layering velocity. So depending on what you're hitting, it will trigger a different vowel. Um, but using the key switches here, when I click it here, you're going to notice that the key switches up here are activated. It allows you to control all the individual parts here on the key switch. And it's really great if you want things to sit right in the mix. If it's mousse or it's sto, those longer ones, they need to be a little earlier in your own quantization. Obviously, A, O, A are a little more tight and all that. So it's an important, um, important thing to be aware of. Um, it really allows you to get a more realistic choir that doesn't sound so staccato and sort of limpy. You can get it so fluent by placing them uh, in the right way in your sequence. And don't over-quantize any of this. Um, I really... Uh, prefer to play it in hand and, and sort of manipulate and sit and, and place the things afterwards a little bit. Um, the multivials again sit great in a normal sequence, but for the staccatos, just um, take a little time and, and get it right. Let's take a look here um, briefly at the macados. I think sometimes we tend to overrate legato. Um, sometimes you can actually do really beautiful things with the ensemble macado, especially if you have a little tiny overlap between the notes, just like you would do in legato fashion. Uh, let me demonstrate, let me just play something really basic here. Uh, with the ensemble Mercados. In particular, epic music is more forgiving. You don't always need to be um, so delicate with the legato stuff um, because most likely you'll be sitting in a mix somewhere. And particularly with a choir this big, there's a little more imprecision. Some singers will start and stop a little earlier and on. So another aspect to point out that's also important is in this video, I'm only using our ensemble patches. We actually have males and females completely separated in the sessions. And for that reason, we also have individual patches for both males and females. So if you don't want that bleed, particularly between tenors and altos and a bit of the sopranos and basses, um, you can load them individually and score with them that way. And there's sometimes there's there's good reason to do that. I just prefer the for 
for the most part, I prefer the more sloppy approach. Just have the whole thing in terms of me on the keys and uh, go with it that way. So, but just so you know that both options are available, both in terms of ensemble patches and individual patches. But yeah, that's sort of a quick glance at Lacrimosa. There's a lot of stuff in the library and I highly encourage you to watch the other videos. But um, I hope this gave you a little introduction to the library and I'll see you in the next one.